Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Allied Digital Services Limited Q2 FY24 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and anyone who wishes to ask a question may enter star and one on their touchstone telephone. To remove yourself from the question queue, please enter star and two. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mayank Vaswani from CDR India. Thank you and over to you Mr. Vaswani. Thank you Zico. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on Allied Digital Services Limited earnings call for the second quarter of financial year 2023-24. We have with us on the call today Mr. Nitin Shah, Founder and CMD, Mr. Nehal Shah, Executive Director, Mr. Paresh Shah, Global CEO and Mr. Gopal Tiwari, Chief Financial Officer. Mr. Nehal Shah will cover the recent developments followed by Mr. Paresh Shah who will then cover the operational performance and order wins followed by Mr. Gopal Tiwari who will walk us through the financial highlights. Thereafter, we shall open the call for the Q&A session. Before we begin, I would like to point out that some of the statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature and a disclaimer to this effect has been included in the earnings documents that have been shared with all of you earlier. I would now like to hand over the call to Mr. Nehal Shah for his opening remarks. Over to you, Nehal. Thank you, Mayank. Good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join our earnings call. I trust that all of you have had a chance to review our earnings document, which was shared earlier, including the investor presentation. I will start with a key development this quarter, which is a certific certification received from the Great Place to Work Institute. We have always followed positive people practices and have taken care to offer employees an engaging platform for growth, which is reflected in the attrition rate that was meaningfully lower than the industry. The certification by Great Place to Work Institute validates our practices. I am sure this will help us to continue to attract the best talent at Ally Digital. The certification from Great Place to Work is indicative of the progress, progress that is being made across the organization. As we have shared earlier, there is a holistic transformation underway across ADSL covering functions such as service governance, customer support, human resources, to name a few. The endeavor is to graduate the company into higher orbit with larger size contracts, addition of high profile customers and a clear right to win, to win in our businesses due to competences and capabilities. The outcome of this transformation will be greater scale and enrich margin profile, high return ratios and greater value creation for stakeholders. We will continue to share our progress on key developments supporting this transformation each quarter. As we have shared earlier, we offer a wide range of services with a focus on managed services for global enterprise customers, as well as being a master system integrator. Our service capability matrix includes infrastructure management, cloud enablement, cyber security, integrated solutions, software services, and workplace management services. While providing services, we integrate the appropriate building blocks from our service capability matrix to create customized service offerings, which ensure that each project receives the required skill set for successful execution. Starting last quarter, we restructured offerings into two distinct categories, services and solutions. Under the services bucket, we focus on providing continuous long-term support to our clients. These services are of an annuity or recurring nature, while clients engaging in ongoing contracts to re receive consistent and reliable assistance. On the other end, under the solutions category, we deliver one-time implementation tailored to address specific needs or challenges faced by our clients. These projects could include transformative initiatives, upgradation projects, or setting up infrastructure at the new locations. We derive 70% of our revenues from the global customers through our rest of the world operations, which are dominated by a presence in the North American market through a subsidiary Allied Digital Services LLC. Around 30% of our revenues are from India, where we serve enterprise customers as well as government customers. This provides us with a natural hedge, as we have seen some macroeconomic challenges in the U.S. market for the last two quarters impacting the growth from that region. However, the India business has been delivering robust growth, which is around 53% higher in quarter two or on a year-on-year -year basis and 62% higher for the half year. In that backdrop, I will briefly touch upon key aspects of our performance. 
in quarter 2 we reported revenues of 170 cr an increase of 2% on a year on year basis this we believe has been a resilient performance in the face of temporary macro headwinds while the overall opportunity set remains attractive and we continue to pursue large deals there is a slight elongated cycle of evaluation due to microeconomic condition and pressure in the it sector globally secondly on ebitda I am sure that all of you have noted a progressive increase in EBITDA from quarter 4 23 to quarter 1 24 and a further improvement this quarter as well. We have indicated a focus on higher value and more remunerative contracts as well as multiple actions and initiatives to drive margins higher and we continue to demonstrate progress in a positive direction. Importantly, we remain highly excited about our growth prospects. We continue to engage with MarQ customers and discuss Discussions are centered around leveraging deep capabilities to drive their IT transformation objectives. There are large contracts and the pipeline is very solid. Our focus will be to convert this into contracted business at the earliest. Now I would like to hand over to our global CEO, Mr. Paresha, to share key insights about the operational and key developments of during the quarter. Thank you. Thank you, Nehal. A very good afternoon to everyone. I will. I will now briefly take you through the operational performance and key developments of the company during the quarter. As Nehal had mentioned, we have a very strong pipeline and that is making us very excited of the opportunities that are coming through. However, the contract evaluation processes, the cycles are getting slightly stretched due to macroeconomic factors and the addition of new customer is taking a bit longer than as anticipated in previous quarters. Amidst the backdrop, we have added around 142 crores of new contracts this quarter. This include, let me walk you through the India contracts first. Allied Digital Services Limited proudly announces acquisition and operationalization of a contract from Adani Wilmar Limited, a leading FMCG company in India. The multifaceted agreement involves the delivery of business services, infrastructure management and operational management services with a primary focus on enhancing infrastructure deployments as well as automation and governance of seamless IT service. Furthermore, ADHL has secured a substantial three-year contract from Coromandel International spanning data center support services, workplace management services for their uh, corporate offices and plants across India, including the management of 750 retail stores. Third, I want to highlight one more opportunity a significant achievement in a multi-year contract with SBI Life Insurance, a joint venture between India's largest bank and a prominent French financial institution. This agreement entails providing 24 by 7 IT managed services to support the critical infrastructure and applications. Let me also quickly go through some uh, master system integration projects for smart cities. I will give you some updates. Uh, as you know, we have been working last quarters for five smart cities actively one is the Lucknow project, which we have completed phase one and has gone live. Proud to say that more than 500 cameras and 120 bus, bus, buses are already updated uh, with the latest technology. And obviously, the, the data center and command center is complete. The Sholapur project, again, the command center has gone live and operational. These are both very proud moments for Allied Digital. The Punjab Smart Cities, also the work is in pro uh, progress. The data center for the two smart cities is already completed. The cloud setup is also 75% complete. I also want to highlight that you know all of our smart city projects have zero penalty on, on all of our services that we are doing. Today, I want to also add, we have added a lot of logos uh, on the enterprise managed uh, this uh, system integration projects, such as Loda Group, the Tata Motors Group, the Vedanta Group. Uh, this just makes us proud about this. Uh, let me go back to um, the international operations and I wanted to highlight that we are excited to share three new contract wins this quarter. The first is a large uh, real estate firm in Midwest USA which includes infrastructure managed services, cyber security, digital workplace services, cloud support and Adidas platform. A central US based bank for digital and workplace services has also awarded us a three year contract. A large energy company in Northeast uh, USA has managed, uh, has given us, engaged us for uh, digital workplace services. Our, our contract with Spark Group, as we mentioned last quarter, is progressing very well. At the same time, we are implementing new scope of work as scope gets added into new technologies such as AI and cybersecurity. 
in fact we continue to see more and its scope of work coming to us from this large group and customers are seeking deeper and more complex solutions across the emerging emerging technology for those of you who have been following the company you would know that we have been strengthening our partnership with large it services firms and global consulting firms to jointly serve customers do these through this partnerships they have been a significant inflow of new customers and we that's why see a very strong pipe, pipeline including several managed large marquee global names having built a, a, a richer client base and in, the, in for the last 2 3 years with a more elaborative track record we are now also reemphasizing on our direct channels for sales and marketing there will these will be leveraged more comprehensively to to add new business now i want to hand over to our chief officer chief financial officer mr gopal tiwari to cover the financial highlights for the quarter under review thank you parish bhai i'll now quickly cover the financial highlights for the period under review in q2 fy24 our consolidated revenue reached rupees 170 crore marking a 2% growth from rupees 167 crore in q2 fy23 The bit of a quarter stood at rupees 21 crore in Q2 FY24, compared to rupees 26 crore in Q2 FY23. The bit of margin was steady at 12% as compared to 15% in the corresponding quarter last year. Here it is important to point out that the base quarter had slightly elevated margins due to reversal of provisions made earlier. As we have pointed out, we have progressively improved our bit of margin from 10% in Q4 FY23 to 11% in Q1 FY24. and further to 12% in the current quarter under review we have said that our aspiration is to get the beta margin towards the mid teens level and are actively working to ensure the improved margins levels in the quarters ahead pat for q2 fy24 stood at rupees 12 crore as compared to 18 crore in the same period last year while our revenue grew by 1% our ebitda grew by 17% qoq basis with a margin expansion of 100 basis points pat grew by 34% on quarter on quarter basis Looking at the half-year financials, our revenue was rupees 339 crore, a 6% increase from rupees 320 crore, and a bit of stood at rupees 38 crore as against rupees 39 crore in F H1 FY23. H1 FY24 PBT stood at 8% compared to 10% in H1 FY23. PAT stood at rupees 20 crore as against rupees 25 crore in H1 FY23. Now turning to some insights in our quarterly performance. Firstly. Our India business witnessed a 53% year-on-year growth, while the global business, contributing around two-thirds of revenues, faced a softer quarter. We anticipate a resurgence in activity level in H2, expecting increased wins and deliveries in the coming months. Allied Digital maintains a robust balance sheet, being a debt-free entity on a net debt basis, reflecting our prudent financial management and stability. Additionally, we have carefully managed capital expenditures with no significant capex spend during this period. We also hold a cash and cash equivalent position of around rupees 99 crore across international and domestic operations, providing the necessary liquidity and flexibility to meet operational and strategic requirements. Our debt has remained stable, and with the further increase in cash and equip equivalents on a net basis, we are debt-free company and are well positioned to invest for growth. All of you would have noted the further improvement in DSO days for the half year. This has been a key focus area for the last 3 4 years for which we have expanded significant efforts in order to streamline this at 87 days for h1 h1 period we are now at par with the industry norms and the impact of our initiatives is visible on the improving roc profile and stronger cash generation with this strong financial foundation we are well prepared to seize opportunities invest in growth initiatives and consistently deliver values to our stakeholders Now I would uh, hand over to our chairman and managing director, Mr. Nitin Shah, for his remarks. Thank you, thank you, Gopal. It's very interesting. Uh, <coughs> I'm sorry. So I will try to take you on a larger picture and the background. So we have come long way after 40 years. We have made the company completely relevant. and ready for the future challenges which is quite different than what it used to be 5 years and more and more rapidly it's changing and in that process the new technology is going to disrupt the entire world in all businesses get going to get disrupted further with after uh, web 3.0 which is going to become very popular where ai is become to going to be completely it's like a norm you know basic 
it will be by default ai will be there in web 3.0 now uh, uh, in this uh, uh, you know scenario plenty of opportunities which are going to be coming towards us and we have made our company so robust on all kind of services to ease out the right kind of uh, skill set uh, we have aligned them on the cloud skill set so there is major impetus which is going to be there on both aws cloud and azure cloud of microsoft the second uh, skill set we have developed huge is in terms of cyber security because that's going to be the the fastest moving uh, area in the world where people are uh, i mean there are plenty of new uh, threats which are coming up and we are in a position to uh, stop or uh, you know uh, in, uh, intersect that uh, exactly on the right time on real time basis so cyber security is going to be our major focus third one is of course when we talk about uh, we have aligned our large force uh, uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, people uh, towards smart city as you know that we have done almost more than 12 smart cities and that's our expertise which is proven in this, in this country we built several command and control center data centers uh, it, it is a kind of a, a, a real good case studies involving kind of technology including iot's cloud virtualization video intelligence and all so i think that's our forte uh, plenty of uh, projects we are refusing because if we find some risk in that project being a government we do not touch that uh, and we are only going for one which we feel is ideal for us so uh, that is something which uh, now has become very very matured service and i wouldn't be wrong if i say we are the market leader the fourth segment which is our knock and sock uh, it has become too uh, uh, you know uh, uh, strong in our company whereas we are at par with any large company that you compare in terms of practices that we are having we have improved our service governance a lot and uh, and that's why the large companies like extension pwc uh, uh, infosys and all they are using our company for delivering their customer services and i am very proud because my entire uh, uh, 47 years of experience has gone only in it services and today's it services is, is quite different than what it used to be in those days then the next one comes is a very interesting for us is that we have created several skill set on our software division and we have created two patented uh, software platform one is our editas which has got got uh, which is getting lot of uh, you know uh, a success uh, everywhere across the globe and some of the large players have standardized on our uh, uh, editas which is now not just about service uh, platform but also it involves a lot of automations which are built in that and also convergence in technology the future is going to be convergence because nobody has got time in this fast world to key in everything onto the either mobile or on your uh, desktop or laptop you need to just talk something and then you will get the result and that's something which is getting adapted rapidly and we have taken a stride on that so even banking we have created a banking software which is known as a fino alike which is completely uh, voice enabled it's not voice enabled it's a conversion technology that we have used so more than 60 services that you can do just by speaking on to the mobile and your entire transaction will be taken care of the last one which we are talking about where we have invested a lot is the workplace management where we feel uh, there are very few companies who have got that kind of presence footprint that we have got so today as you know that we uh, support uh, 72 countries and some of the countries like all the european countries uk us canada then you talk about singapore australia japan china brazil we have our own direct forces and that's the attempt which we are going to do that and very we soon we'll add a couple of more countries and the countries where we do not have presence we use partners and the idea is to make sure that we go direct in most of the cases that the partner margin is getting eliminated so we increase our uh, profit margins or ability to acquire new customers so these are the things that we have put in place and i am very confident the growth is going to be very robust one thing i can tell you with so much of skill set and the strength that we have got with 3500 people Uh, i don't think so and at our our size or rather i would say uh, positioning uh, is so strong but we are highly underrated company you will not find anywhere in the world so 
I would request you to uh, uh, look into our company in more micro level and see uh, how we perform. We have changed completely in last uh, six, seven years, and we are in the uh, path of fastest growth. Thank you. So should we begin the Q and A session? Yes. Before we can open the floor. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the stone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Gaurav Agrawal from 91 Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, sir, in terms of your uh, revenue growth, uh, how do you see the rest of the year and, you know, FI25 and if these large deals which you have been referring to, if they come on board, then what could be the revenue trajectory? If they don't, then what could be the revenue trajectory? If you can just paint some kind of scenario Sorry, to interrupt. Mr. Agrawal, may we request you to use your handset, please? Your voice is muffled, sir. Is it better now? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, I, I think I have understood uh, your question. Uh, like uh, we said in our last quarter call also, we are very, very uh, focused on our 2025 numbers and the revenue targets that we have given uh, in the previous call as well, we stick by it that we are looking at uh, closing uh, to the four-digit top line uh, by the year 2025. And we would want to continue uh, to be on that. Our large deals that are there in the pipeline, which are almost on the verge of closures, some places, uh, further negotiations, or there are some delays that are happening uh, due to the uh, overall macroeconomic in the US. But however, the pipelines remain strong, new requirements are coming in, and we are very, uh, very, very excited about the next three to four quarters that are going to be coming up. Thank you, sir. So the line for Mr. Gaurav has dropped. May we move to the next question? Our next question is from the line of Jyoti Singh from Aryan Capital Markets Limited. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my question is on the uh, employee cost reduction side. That is uh, sequentially almost 8% down. So if you could uh, elaborate on that, then I will ask my second question. Yeah, yeah, I'll answer for that. See, the 8% reduction is mainly on account of being last quarter being the first quarter of the year. A lot of revision and appraisals happen, and some areas are also paid. Variables are paid to the employees. So it is mainly because of that, and there are certain, some uh, reduction was on account of e-shop uh, hate. So both things put together, this quarter we have got a better uh, numbers for employee cost. Okay, and uh, so similarly, we see uh, some of impact on other expenses, or uh, this is because of some other reason. Yeah, that is that is that is cost optimization and better cost control. I mean, it is it is it is mainly because of that. We we are as we have earlier also said that we are always on the on the uh, path of improving our margins. So one of the tool for that is to cost optimization and uh, cost control. So those things are also in place. So that is being reflected in this quarter also. Okay, thank you, sir. So, sir, following to my previous question only, like, uh, uh, are we on track on the hiring side or we are, uh, uh, you know, utilizing earlier employee that we hired? You can elaborate on that. Yeah, yeah. so our hiring strategy is absolutely at place. Uh, there is always a badge that we keep uh, for our future projects that we want to or that we envisage is in the pipeline are going to be closed. So, and there is a constant uh, reskilling and upskilling also that keeps on happening uh, uh, at, at our side. So whenever a person who has just got free from, from any project will be put into the reskilling uh, 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 room, trading room, I would say. And then from there, we will keep him ready or on bench as soon as we get a new project to be deployed over there. So it's a standard practice which is being followed uh, 
across across the IT industry. Yeah, just to add to what Nehal said, uh, training is going to be key focus for us uh, in coming uh, immediate quarters. The reason being, uh, we see a lot of uh, big pipeline, especially in a lot of new technologies, especially cybersecurity and cloud and also AI. So we definitely encourage employees to take cross tower trainings, learn more and more broader technologies. And this is definitely, as we see the pipeline being strong, um, we would be quite uh, you know, keen in making sure that people are well equipped. And obviously talent acquisition is very important and we are making sure that we are expanding our horizon to kind of make sure we can manage the pipeline requirements that is there. Okay, great. Thank you, sir. And sir, follow up on the uh, order book side that we have seen improvement in this quarter. So uh, we are seeking guidance on how this trend is expected to shape up for the full year. If you can guide us. Could you? Yeah. So on the order book side, this is Paresh here. Um, as we we see a kind of a positive trend going quite up. If these are there are some large deals, if they materialize, obviously the order book will be really spiking up. Uh, so right now we definitely see continuous growth. As you know, our order book comprises of two things. One is the contracts we have already won. Uh, so that is one aspect, and obviously the contracts which we are going to win, which are some large size contracts. So we see uh, pretty much a positive spike coming in the order book. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. And sir, uh, last question on the uh, smart city side, uh, like uh, we totally had done 12. So uh, any target on that front? Yes, so I just quickly gave an update uh, on the recent five cities that we are talking about. So we are moving very good. Uh, we finished some major milestones on these projects. Uh, the last five ones being Lucknow Smart City, Solapur Smart City, and three cities in Punjab. Uh, so we achieved the phase one, which was a very big uh, phase for Lucknow city, the command center, the operational center has gone live. Same thing for Solapur, the command center has gone live. Uh, we are already entering the phase two of Lucknow. Also the three Punjab cities, that is also the data center is al already complete. The cloud part is already complete 70, 75%. So we are doing a great progress in delivering those smart cities also. Just to add to what uh, Arisha said, uh, I would I would just add to say that uh, there are a lot of other smart cities that are going to be coming up in the pipeline from the uh, government of India uh, in the phase two, uh, which which we are we are expecting the announcements to come in in the first quarter, and we might be uh, uh, bidding for uh, for many of them. So yeah, so the first smart city which came, the project was of hundred smart cities. This time we are seeing or hearing that they are going to be taking up. 300 or 400 most more smaller cities where they will be doing similar kind of projects. So there is a huge scope and potential uh, that we see in the coming year. Maybe maybe this could be announced uh, uh, near the elections, sometime near the elections, Lok Sabha elections. That's how it is. Okay. okay, great. Thank you, sir. I will come back. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Gaurav Agrawal from 9-1 Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, sorry, sir, my call uh, dropped. Uh, so what I was asking is the revenue trajectory for the remaining two quarters and for FY25. Um, it provided the deal which you have been having in the pipeline is fructify, and in the case, if these deals doesn't come through in the next six months to one year. So uh, thank you, Gaurav, for that question. So Gaurav, uh, we are very, very uh, excited and happy that we are, and we are seeing a lot of progress happening on the deals that are there in the pipeline. Of course, the progress which we had anticipated it would have uh, happened in the last one or two months. It's going a bit slow, but the progress is in the right space. The only right. uh, uh, thing is that what we are waiting for is a is a final uh, go ahead from the customer side, uh, and which we feel should be happening in the next one or two months. Uh, if okay. that happens, of course the growth trajectory is going to be huge. Uh, supposingly, for some reason, it doesn't happen. We are still uh, sure that we'll be growing uh, uh, with with the additional business that are coming in the pipeline. Of course, the large projects that we are talking of will give us a huge, huge uh, hmm. growth potential. But however, uh, the other projects which are also there in the pipeline will give us a steady run of uh, uh, top line that is happening. Okay. So, sir, uh, in the second case, you know... There is no particular one project that I am talking of. These are multiple projects that are there in the pipeline, uh, right. the large contracts that we are talking of. So, one of them should materialize very soon, is what okay. we are looking at. 
सर एनी बेस केस ग्रोथ दैट यू आर टारगेटिंग फॉर दिस ईयर एंड फॉर एफ so uh, fy25 we have still kept our targets very high uh, we uh, we have already given that in the last quarter call also that we want to intend to go by 25 or mostly by fy26 to be in the hmm. uh, in the four digit top line okay. that is what we are looking and we feel that is achievable still okay and sir once we reach that stage so will we be a, again at 12 11 12% kind of ebitda margin company or those ebitda margins can also inch up so generally when when the top line grows uh, there is a lot of possibility of optimizing the cost and we are sure that our ebitda margins will also keep on improving as we move forward uh, in that zone because your yes, other fixed costs and other costs will not drastically go up uh, they will all be uh, going in a linear manner but this growth will give us a lot of cost optimization opportunity okay and so just on these pipelines uh, which you have been referring to um whom are we competing these uh, against and uh, uh, when the customers are taking a decision on these deals is the discussion more around more on the scope of the work or more on the pricing side uh, you know one way is that uh, maybe they are concerned about the pricing on their macroeconomic environment the other would be just that they are discussing the scope of work and that is what taking longer time so uh, so i i would uh, just say the scope of work and all is closed what is happening is that because of this uncertainty things that are happening people do not want to go in for a change very easily they are just Correct. being taking the decision of when they have to change hmm. just to tell you that i will not be able to name the thing because we are under strong nda but we are working hmm. with large uh, four iop players to compete and win so okay. one of them is our partner and we are competing with the rest of the two okay okay Great sir all the best for this deal and wish you a very happy Diwali Thank you sir thank you Our next question is from the line of Darshil Pandya from Fintrust Capital please go ahead uh, hello sir am i audible Yes yes yeah. sir please go ahead yeah uh, sir the first question was in the editors which we uh, discussed in the month of september so you said that you will be soon you know launching this version 6 of adidas any update on that have you yes uh, yeah so we are already having lot of traction for the 6 version 6 because customer is very excited in moving lot of things into ai so we are already launched the 6.0 beta version where we are talking about conversational ai being added on top of adidas which gives them tremendous capabilities to do automation of their processes so we in fact we are already doing a pilot with two customers already so so that's how we are moving very fast on aditas to make sure that uh, you know we may make it into production very soon correct so as as you said so you know uh, you, you are still confident of you know uh, uh, taking this separately as a segment or in the next 3 to 4 quarters yes yes absolutely yes because it is uh, now you know crossed over 100 plus customers where aditas is being used direct and indirect uh, mm-hmm. and we see that as a major traction and as we have adopted ai as a part of this uh, we feel very confident that you know this will become a major uh, channel of our business in coming years correct and in regards to sir tas uh, you said that you know last time you you said that you you are targeting some regional rural banks for this so have we got any uh, you know a, any anything on on that have we added a bank or a... yes no we are in still in processes uh, we have also uh, for getting those banks still the conversations are going on uh, for mid size banks uh, at the same time we were leveraging this platform not just for now banking we are going to do a cross leverage to lot of other sectors also including hr and finance so we are also taking this platform to lot of other opportunities including cyber security we have integrated that so bank is one avenue but the same platform is being used for multiple uh, uh, you know uh, industries now so that's a kind of major achievement um, that we are doing you know on the conversational ai so when can we expect this uh, you know changing into numbers yeah so that's why we are broadening the uh, conversational ai platform and this is where we see very soon we are already doing two pilots also we are excited about it that we should convert this into a major wins from the next year as i mentioned in my uh, you know discussion also uh, in my topic spark group in the us is very excited about this we have demonstrated that and they are very keen to take it into the retail industry 
to make sure we can customize a lot of automation for their business processes. So we see good traction. It is a matter of time how we kind of build this fast and make sure we make successful pilots with them. Correct. And uh, sir, on the last question was on the you know phenolide where you are expecting some strong momentum. So there you said that you know you are you are also looking to uh, target the banks as the top five banks are already you know they have already deployed this system. So what's the progress on that? So, so just focusing on the banking sector per se, since we have now uh, you know more BFSI segment customers, we feel more confident to take this forward. But yes, we still have to see the success into that. So, uh, so what has happened is uh, become a chicken and egg story. It's like who wants to get the bell, who, who wants to be the first one. So there are multiple discussions going on, but the, the question comes that if you have a reference that you have deployed this anywhere, please do come back to us. So we are just figuring out and we have now gone ahead and even told that why don't you use it as a pilot and use it for free for six months and figure out um, how the usage is. So there are uh, breakthroughs that we are hoping and, and I think it should happen soon. Maybe okay. maybe by the first quarter we should be we should be going there. Okay, and uh, the, since we have this existing relationship with a lot of our uh, partners, uh, for example, Infosys, Daimler, and all this, have you got any new business from this uh, this client, or uh, have you added a new client? If, and if and if you can name any. Uh, yeah, we uh, we basically are working very actively with all customers. So. Every partner we are adding business across the globe, whether it's Infosys or PwC or Deloitte. So there's a lot of momentum on that. In fact, PwC has signed off on our Aditas platform and they are taking to our customers, uh, their customers across the globe. So significant movement is happening with the partners. Got it, got it. And there, there, are, there are certain deals that we have already closed this quarter with some of our partners. Yes. The pipeline is very strong with partners. As we said uh, earlier also that uh, in the US market, we generally typically work as a tier two partner uh, to some of our large IOPs and other players. Uh, most of the deals, even the announcement that we have done uh, uh, today and the number that we have given, large portion of that has come through our partners. Got it, got it. So one, one final question. Uh, since you said on the uh, this uh, your opening remarks, what was the contract value that you have won for, for this quarter? Uh, I guess it was 143 crores or something? Yeah, 142 crores. Yeah, 142 crores. Uh, 142 crores of orders that we have won for this quarter, right? Correct. Yes. Correct. All right, all right. Thank you so much, sir, and all the best for, uh, for the next coming quarters. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Raj from Arja Partners. Please go ahead. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Raj, your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, now I'm audible. <coughs> so maybe request you to speak a little louder, sir. <coughs> You're not Hello. Yes, sir, thank you. Fine? Please yeah. go Hello, am I audible now? Yes, yes yeah, go ahead. go ahead. Hello. Uh, Mr. Raj, you Raj, can go can... ahead, sir. We can hear you. Achha, Raj, we can hear you. Please Achha, go ahead. How, how much is the outstanding order book as on Q2 end? Once again, outstanding one? Outstanding order book. Outstanding order book. Yes. Around 1600 plus order book is still outstanding mm -hmm. on this, uh, this quarter end. Mm -hmm. And how much is the executing time for this? Three years on an average, around three years period. Okay. Yeah. Achha, so we can expect out of the 1600 crores, around 270 crores to be executed in HY2. Is it right? Uh, so I just to answer that, you no know, order book is something which is typically doesn't give the actual, as I had said in the previous call also, which doesn't give the actual outflow of our top line because order book comprises of the orders that we have won, but mm -hmm. it does miss out on things that we are doing farming. So there could be extra farming that we are doing. Sometimes we get orders of confirmation uh, for five years. However, we get the PO yearly. So mm -hmm. the order book which comprises doesn't account to all of these numbers because it becomes really difficult for us to come up with a number. So right. I would request that if you could not just add uh, the 1600 and divide into three years or five years and then come out. So okay. the reason behind that is that because we are in a slightly different model. It's not that I will I will be able to give you a number yeah. 
that we get on a day one and you just divide it by five years or four years. Uh, we are typically in a business where things keep on changing quarter on quarter. If we mm-hmm. keep on winning, if there are renewals happening, there is no farming happening where we so are dynamic in nature. So it's, it's a little dynamic in nature. So, uh, so coming up with a number and then dividing it by three or five will not actually give us. That will uh, not be fair. The actual okay. Okay. Understood. Yeah, yeah. So, so overall, no, hmm. we are not. A, so the IT world, you know, it's not a typical uh, FMCG or EPC company that you have a standard, because as uh, Nehal mentioned. When we have order book, these are on services, but a lot of projects keep coming with the customer on infrastructure enhancement, you know, transformation, cloud stories. So that is an all incremental revenue that is expected from the same order book added to that. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's a very key factor because those projects are just ad hoc projects keep coming and that adds to big revenue. The other thing is a lot of spikes that we get either from the smart city projects or from uh, you know winning very large deals that completely kind of shoots up the order book. This is the base that what we're talking about. All right, and and also in HY two, in half year two, can we expect the execution to be good than compared to H H one? Yeah, from the execution point of view, as you know, uh, you know we are continuously into making sure our delivery becomes because. Always, we are making sure that our profit margins improve, right? So that's very key. And for that, you know, there are a few areas of risk that we want to uh, tighten it uh, as from the macroeconomic factors, whether it is training, making sure that people are not on the bench, so make cross train them to do many things. Okay, we deploy shared services, as you know, at a lot of our large projects. So what happens is the efficiency just increases as more and more projects come. Okay, and we are able to kind of cross train and add them. The other risk we do is making sure that uh, the employee performance. That's a very key thing that we focus on to make sure that he gets uh, to deliver 100% uh, of the work that he is doing. And uh, the third is obviously making sure that uh, the profitability continues to improve. So that's very important for us to make sure that uh, you know our cost of delivery uh, is either remaining constant or being less. And as we scale more. Definitely, the EBITDA is going to improve on that. So that's how we see it. Okay. Just to add to what uh, uh, Parish said, uh, second half of the year is generally uh, very, very active, and we uh, keep on onboarding a lot of customers. And there is a possibility that the top line and other things will also keep on going up. Uh, most probably, the last quarter is always uh, heavy, where a lot of budgets are getting, uh, uh, you know, used for, and then that's when we get a lot of one-time project as well. So we see that trend would continue in the second half of the year, and the the other context that we are talking of, if we hit them, uh, probably we could get some uh, revenue coming in the top line in the last quarter as well of this financial year. All right, understood. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Sanjeev Kumar Damani from SKD Consulting. Please go ahead. Uh, namaskar sir and my respect for the promoter of this very fine company and uh, current management is highly appreciable for uh, uh, taking this company step by step to the higher uh, achieve achievement uh, uh, am i audible sir yes yes thank you appreciate your feedback thank you sir uh, sir actually uh, i was just you know a lot of things have been clarified of course i am very new to this company uh, so sir i was just wondering about the balance sheet investment properties is one uh, item of 77 crore uh, shown so i mean are we intending to realize it in days to come so uh, sorry we had identified a few places especially hinjewadi when we were growing in the first phase we thought we would be reaching more than 10000 people so soon and hence right. uh, what i thought probably the uh, rate of uh, you know construction is not increasing as much as the land cost is increasing so we have right. taken seven acre land in tijawadi which is right. yet to be utilized two acre land we have taken in talewadi right okay. opposite to uh, you know this uh, uh, fujitsu and in that area uh, cape gemini is also there etos is there and uh, there again uh, we have a plan to create our own data center there but uh, we have just kept it uh, as a 
uh, as a op- option, you know, whenever we need to Thank use you. them and when we grow. So that's Thank the kind of investment that we have done. So, so sir, this uh, yeah, entire investment properties is reflected through the land that we own today and not the uh, buildings and any other thing. No, no. That, so land, land is one part of it. There is a uh, building at Navi Mumbai, which is right now currently being used as our delivery center. We have got other offices at Seeps, which are also being used for our delivery to global customers. Uh, and we have an office uh, at Nariman Point, uh, which is, of course, our corporate office from where we all are right now currently working out of. And we just uh, also invested uh, in Calcutta. Uh, so in Calcutta also, we bought an office for our uh, expansion. Uh, typically, the building uh, that we have in Mape is about 56,000 square feet. The office at Chiefs is about 20,000 square feet. Uh, and, and I think those, those is the, that are the kind of requirements that we would be wanting uh, to have with us for the growth that we see, the demand that we see, so that we don't have to run and spend money on, uh, on acquiring real estate uh, on, on rental purpose. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. I am satisfied. Sir, uh, one thing is regarding trade receivables, which is now 133 crores on consolidated basis. So uh, these are all open credit that we'll give, we give to our client or it is supported by some sort of guarantees? Uh, no, no, these are, these are mostly open credit given to our enterprise customers and government customers also. Okay. So uh, there's, there's no, but most of, this, most of this outstanding that we see is, is, in the, uh, is coming from the allied LLC because those are large uh, Customers where the revenue or the billing that happens monthly is also on a bigger bigger number. So Sir, we have learned the hard way in our journey, and hence we become extremely cautious, and we don't touch those clients. If you see the kind of clientele that we serve, these are all top of the globally top clients, and we don't serve uh, SME client as much. Yeah, so, so we are very clear. We will not take risk. And then now, very, our very, also happy. like very, we've already mentioned. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. The client profile right. that we mentioned is also like Adani or Tata or Koromandal right. of the world right. are all very big problems. Very happy, sir. Very happy. One more thing, sir. Equivalent of cash, 91 crore is some sort of FDs or something like that or some, some other form of undies that uh, we have received from our client. 91 crore mm-hmm. is there. So some of, in cash. Yeah, yeah. This actually this comprises the combination of uh, overseas cash in hand and domestic company also. So in domestic company, mostly that amount is in form of margin money given to the bank in form of FD against the bank guarantees given to our customers. And other amount is lying some in the FD form, some in the current account, just to take care of our eventuality in, in, in case uh, sudden requirement of working capital or, or to cater to our customers. So, so it is a combination of both, you can say. Okay. And, and sir, uh, you know, there are uh, two items uh, of current assets, 55 crores in current assets and non-current assets are also 41 crores. So largely maybe provisions or something like that or some, some real uh, realizable values there in that. Other current assets are some 55 yes, crores. Must be realizable, but, but I'll, I, I cannot give you answer on that off the, off the cuff. I'll have to come back to you. You okay, can, no you can problem, share sir. your mail ID, we, I'll, I'll share that details. Uh, no, mean. no problem, sir. Uh, thank you very much and all the best to you, sir. And we look forward to your continuous growth uh, in coming days. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Appreciate. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Janice, who is an investor. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. Is my uh, voice audible? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So maybe request you to use your handset, please. Thank you. Hello. Is it better now? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Uh, continuing the previous question on cash in hand uh, of 91 crores. So why are we not able to see any other income against the FDs that are there? No, it is there definitely, but but uh, it is in some some there are some other uh, exchange losses also there in that other income. So it gets set off. Yeah, so most most so of this the... is the net amount. Other income you are seeing the net amount. The income and expense both are netted off, and then balance amount is shown there. So we have kept certain work chest money yeah. for acquisition. Uh, uh, you may hear very soon. We are constantly looking at some. So so entire amount is not in form of FD as I told you. I mean, the portion of that amount is in form of FD, which is lying with the bank. 
as margin money. Rest of the amount is lying in a, it's not, not earning that much. So I, I'll tell you the reason behind that is that most of the amount which is lying with us is currently in the, in the US. And as we all know, the US FD rates are not equivalent to the India FD rates. That is the reason you would not be seeing a large uh, uh, interest in, in incoming interest on it. Right. Uh, so, uh, digging it a bit deeper, uh, what kind of ex losses or expenses are that you have mentioned as return off against that income, number one? And uh, I missed the part that are we uh, looking for some kind of an organic opportunity as well? So, yeah, the, the inorganic growth number is always there in the eye. There is nothing that we have straight away on the table, uh, but we are constantly in the view of uh, looking uh, at uh, at companies which are uh, of, a, of a size which is uh, digestible by us and which are in the line of business where we see a lot of growth in the future. So there are uh, companies that we are constantly looking at and the endeavor is there. But as soon as we come up close, material is something we'll announce and we'll let uh, all our investors know. Okay. And what kind of losses are there which you just mentioned? I will give you the details right now. It is not handy with me. I'll have to just check. I'll get back to you in case you require uh, the details. You can leave your uh, mail ID. Sure. Uh, sure. I'll, I'll uh, connect with you or CDR team separately for that. No issues. Yeah. Uh, sure. Secondly, uh, what is the average that we are targeting in long run? What is the, sorry, your voice uh, is a little what, stable. What, what kind of uh, return on equity is, is our endeavor to reach at in long term? So ROE, ROE is typically a, just a formula based match. So I feel that if we keep on increasing our top line and we keep on increasing our bottom line, our ROE will keep on constantly going up. So that is not the lever that we are targeting. The lever that we are targeting right now is to constantly improve our top line and the EBITDA margin. We feel that if we are concentrating on the two of this, the output will eventually also help in increasing the ROE and ROCE both. So last year for the whole year, we achieved the 10 plus percent of ROE. So this year we are expecting better than that. We, we aspire to achieve better than that ROE. Okay. And just on suggestion uh, as an investor, uh, the order book which you mentioned, can we get a detailed breakup in terms of how much is the government order book and how much is the private order book? And within private also, how much is in India and outside India? And secondly, how much is the solutions order book and the services order book? So typically, if you go through our earning presentation, we have mentioned our government, non-government business, our overseas, I mean, rest of the world business and India business, the breakup is already given in terms of percentage. Even the services solution breakup is also given in. Uh, as the earning presentation is already shared. Uh, I hope uh, I request you to go through it. Uh, right. After that, if you have any further questions, you can get in touch with us again. Yeah. No, no, uh, that is the you know, the breakup is in terms of your revenue, right? Which is historical. What I'm asking is in terms of forward, order book is forward looking, which gives us an indication of how the business mix can look in coming time. So that is the reason I'm asking for uh, this information. And Yes, I understand it's going to be in the similar uh, line because that is what we are thinking. Our government business is typically uh, more to do in India, uh, which is typically 10% and we see that traction to go on at the range of 10 to 12%. Uh, the idea why I said uh, to go through that is that even in the future order books, you will not drastically see something going up very fast or something coming down very slow. We want to be very predictable in nature. So yeah, there could be some percentages, but the percentage could be in the I tune of 10%, uh, uh, 10 is government business, it might go to 12% or sometimes 9%. There won't be any drastic changes. So, so uh, by, a, by a large impact, it is going to be similar to what we have shown in the previous years. Understood. Thank you so much. And uh, in terms of your uh, solutions business, is it something that you are targeting uh, rapidly? Because that, I think, gives a JCO kind of a traction once it picks up. And since it's a patented product, it definitely helps you open a lot of doors going forward. So uh, what are the kind of contract terms that are there in a, uh, a solution kind of a business? Is it fixed plus AMC? And if it is like that, then what is the percentage of AMC uh, <coughs> business? So typically, solutions, what we have done is uh, that we have divided our segments in two things, solutions and services. Solutions are the projects that we are doing one time in nature. So those could be migration projects, those could be smart city uh, implementation projects, or those, or those could be any one-time transactional uh, uh, 
uh, output that we need to give to our clients. So typically, there is always going to be margin. In some cases, we will see a margin upscale. In some cases, we will see a mar margin downscale. The reason behind that is that in the solutions uh, segment, we also have some product uh, that we do. Whenever we are implementing a smart city or whenever we are doing a branch expansion uh, for any of our clients, there is a product piece that is also a part of that delivery. So generally, as we are all aware in the IT industry, product margins are a little, uh, little less. Uh, and services is something which we eventually want to cater to more. So from the, any any output or any business that we do in the solutions eventually get converted into services. So that is what is more important for us. So, so our, our strategy is to look into solutions, like say cloud, it's all about migration, ultimately culminating into managed services. When you talk about uh, uh, cyber security, when we do complete consulting, and analysis, it gets converted into real-time monitoring 24 by 7, and that's what we do, and it's coming into services segment. Smart city, when we do designing, architecting, deployment, integration, is a one-time, which gets converted into o and operations and maintenance. Again, it's coming into services. And software also, when we implement, we develop and implement, it gets converted into support. So. Right. Eventually, the strategy is to acquire new customers or new opportunities in the form of solutions, but later on it gets converted into services business. Exactly. So AMC is what you are targeting, right? Yeah, correct. A AMC is not the correct word, but yeah. O&M, and I'm sorry. O&M o and is what you are targeting, right? Correct, correct. Because that gives us a lot of leverage on cost optimization and, and steady growth rate as well. Yeah, and it's so, a continuous client engagement. Okay. So OM brings a lot of more opportunities also. So what kind of margins do we make in OM and contracts generally, typically? It's uh, in the range of you can say around fourteen, fifteen odd percent we minimum we make. A bit tough. A bit tough. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So 14-15% of around 85-90% of the revenue is how we, we, we one can look at it, right? Yes, 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 yes. absolutely. Perfect. And uh, one last question. Uh, uh, what is the, uh, is there any working capital blockage that we find in terms of smart city contracts because they are government contracts or are we getting realiza timely realizations from the government? Yeah, so, so nowadays the contracts are very, very lucrative. Most of these contracts are well designed uh, and there are milestones that we need to achieve and payments are given on the milestones. These milestones start as an advance also. So we get an advance uh, for doing certain work. As soon as the product is delivered, uh, we get another uh, amount for it. So they are pretty much easy uh, in terms of the payment. The payment cycle is also very good. Uh, most of the times we get the payment on time. Uh, generally, uh, if there is a delay, the delay is about a week or two. To add to that, in fact, our kind of projects are not typically the road construction of road and bridges sort of. It's a very really niche kind of projects. So the commercial terms and conditions terms are made that way that no contractor or no service provider should be high and dry on payment side. So by and large, our payments are well within time. So you can see that our improvement in our DSO level, it is it is now typically it is less than the market, I mean, industry uh, uh, standard. standard, you can say. So that gives that. Right. So this uh, 84, 87 or 90 days of uh, data days will be a steady state number that uh, one can look at, right? That is the ideal thing yes. that we want to create. Uh -huh. Okay, got it. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Somitra Joshi from Investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, an audible? Yes, sir. Maybe yes. request you to yes. use your handset, please. Thank you. Yes, yeah. so am I audible? I'm asking you again. Yes, sir. You're audible, but the volume is low, sir. Maybe request you to speak louder, sir. Hello. Is it better? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, so my question is very basic here. My question is... Uh, one, uh, what has happened that uh, last year our margins were relatively higher uh, in those quarters of Q2 and Q3 as compared to what we are guiding for now. 
and the second uh, question is with respect to uh, sequentially now going on to Q2, Q3 and Q4 for the financial year of FY24, uh, do we see that uh, the EBITDA margins will sequentially take an uptick from here for this year also? See, the first question, your uh, last year, that Q2, FY23, the undue little higher, the margin being on a higher side was mainly because, as we had uh, pointed out in our uh, investors' presentation also, it was mainly on account of some reversals, non-recurring type of reversal of expenses were done in that quarter, on account of a couple of customers where we had made certain provisions in anticipation of some SLA getting, getting affected, and we might have been penalized for that. So we had made certain provisions in our books which got sorted out and we fortunately we, we got that money back from the customer and that's why that, that quarter had a spike in margin in Q2 FY23. So that should not be taken as a, that should not be Q2 and 3 rather and that should not be taken as a benchmark for our coming, I mean, current quarter. So, but having said that, definitely Q3 and Q4 is going to be better than this Q1 and Q2 definitely for sure. So that, 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 that's the uh thing we are we are fine. So from EBITDA margin perspective also, correct? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Narendra, who is an investor. Please go ahead. Hi sir, thanks for the opportunity. Am I audible? Yes, sir, please go yeah. ahead. Yeah, yeah. So uh Regarding of the big orders that you are talking about, so are those uh, multi-year contracts or uh, the solutions contracts? So, so they are services multi-year contracts ranging from 18 uh, months to 12 months. Okay, so uh, so if we get those contracts, then, then we are pretty much sorted for the next two three years and the guidance uh, that uh, you have provided about 1,000 crores, so that is... Uh, that is achievable. But what if? Maybe the question to use your handset, sir. Your voice is muffled, sir. Thank you. Yeah, sir. Sure. Hello. Am I audible now? Yes, yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah. So I was saying that uh, if if we uh, receive those those contracts, then we are sorted for the next three years. But uh, how are we? Uh, how confident are we of attaining a thousand crores if uh, one or two of those contracts, you know, fall out? So uh, if you so, could. Uh, so. So what will happen in that scenario, our pipeline is absolutely strong. If not this order, we will get a next order and the pipeline is constantly increasing as we talk. Um, we are seeing from the last quarter call to this quarter call also, we have got a number of more uh, large deals that we are bidding for and the endeavor is to make sure that we keep on uh, pursuing and start achieving those larger contracts. Because that larger contracts gives a lot of confidence to our people and our investors also that uh, we are in that virtue of attaining and uh, going after multi-million dollar contracts. And when I say multi-million, these are all the sizes of about 80 million, 100 million, or maybe more than that also. So if not this, maybe next order. But the idea what I'm trying to put in is that we are on the right track and, and we are sure that we will be able to crack one or the, one or the other uh, large contract. Thank you. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question of our question and answer session. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Uh, thank you for your participation and engagement during this call. If you have any additional questions or require further information about a company, please reach out to our team or contact CDR India. For all of us at Allied Digital, best wishes for a happy Diwali and a prosperous New Year. We look forward to interacting again in the next quarter. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.